Yes, good morning once again. Good morning once again. Uh, welcome to this lesson um, by Edify. It is an e-learning project. And Edify says that uh, every child deserves to learn and flourish. So this lesson is funded and organized by Edify Uganda and uh, implemented by Christian Schools Owners Association together with the uh, ICT Teachers Association. So <clears throat> before we go any further, I request we get uh, an opening prayer for our lesson. I request somebody to give us an opening prayer. Anybody to give us an opening prayer, you can put up your hand and I pick you. Anybody to give us an opening prayer, put up your hand, then I pick you. Put up your hand. Okay, let me pick Ahabwe. Ahabwe Mark. Ahabwe. Okay, Joy, give us an opening prayer. Um, let's have ourselves. King of King, Father of Lords, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love and grace. Please help us during this lesson and each and everything. Go smoothly in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Uh, I welcome you to this lesson. Uh, we are going to have Divinity One, Senior Five, and uh, it is going to be conducted by Teacher Joseph Mukwaya. It is my name. And uh, today, what we are going to look at, it is uh, our lesson for today. It is going to be King Solomon. We want to look at King Solomon. And uh, if you need to contact me, my contact is there, together with my my email address. <clears throat> so <clears throat> before we go any further, before we go any further, we are looking at Divinity One. We are looking at Divinity One. We need to know what is all about this paper? <clears throat> Maybe to remind you, uh, Divinity Paper 1, normally it is set in sections. It has section A, which has uh, the book of laws, and then section B, historical books, and then section C, prophetic and wisdom books. And uh, in total, we have 12 questions whereby you are supposed to answer four questions, at least selecting one from each section. Section A, which is law of books. Section B, which is historical books. And then section C, which is prophetic and wisdom books. So divinity paper one, it is set according to those sections. It has three sections. And so at the moment, we are looking at section B, which is historical books. And today we are going to look at King Solomon. We are going to look at King Solomon. And uh, before we look at what you're going to know, we need to know uh, at the end of the lesson, <clears throat> Uh, we should understand who was King Solomon, uh, what were his reasons for his rise to power, his achievements, and then we shall look at his failures. So that is what we're going to look at today. Who was King Solomon? How did he become a king? Reasons for his rise to power, achievements, and then failures. Now, we need to ask ourselves, or we need to understand who was King 
King Solomon, who was King Solomon. When we talk about King Solomon, he was a son of King David and Bathsheba. He was a son of King David and Bathsheba, and he was the only son. He was the only son of David, through whom God's plan of Israel was demonstrated. King David, uh, King Solomon, was a son of David and Bathsheba, and he was the only son of David, through whom God's plan of Israel was demonstrated. We are seeing that when King David died, he was succeeded by his son Solomon as the king of Israel. Once Solomon had established himself on the throne, he did everything to accomplish the work of his father. His reign was marked by Israel, uh, was marked as uh, the reign of uh, so many achievements, the reign of so many achievements. And he was a wise king of Israel. He was a wise king. However, Solomon had some shortcomings. He had some shortcomings. So when we talk about King Solomon, I think right now we are together. King Solomon was a son of David and Bathsheba. We know that story of David and Bathsheba. And so uh, let us begin. So like I was saying, uh, who was King Solomon? He was a son of David and Bathsheba, and he was the only son uh, of David through whom God's plan of Israel was demonstrated. And we are seeing that when King David died, he was succeeded by his son Solomon as the king of Israel. Once Solomon had established himself, on the throne, he did everything. He did everything to accomplish the work of his father, David. And uh, just like we have said, just like we have said, uh, his reign was marked by several achievements. And it said, it said he was a wise king of Israel. A wise king of Israel had ever had. On the other hand, Solomon had some failures, as you are going to see at the end of the lesson. So we need to know how Solomon became a king. How did he become a king? How did he become a king? And uh, I uh, let me hope that we have our Bibles with us. I need to know who is having a Bible very close. Put up your hand and I pick you. Such that you read for us that story of how King Solomon became a king. Anybody who is having a Bible with you, put up your hand, I pick you. Then you read for us a certain verse in the Bible. Anybody with a Bible with you? Anybody, anybody, put up your hand, I pick you. No one, whenever we are coming for this lesson, you must be with your Bible. You must be with your Bible. Okay, I'm seeing somebody here, Stuart. Stuart? Yes. Good morning, sir. Good morning to you. How are you? Fine, how are you, sir? Okay. Um, okay, you open. Do you have a Bible uh, with you? Yes, I have. Which Bible? We normally use Good News Bible. Yeah, it's a Good News Bible. Okay. Uh, you open. Fats are uh, First Kings. Uh, mm, first Kings. Uh, uh, yes. Chapter one. Yes. Follow it. First Kings chapter one. Uh, mm. I should read. I should read chapter one. First Kings chapter one. Uh, okay. Mm. King David in his old age. That's the title. Yes. 
Then King David, King David was now a very old man, and although his servants covered him with blankets, he could not keep warm. Verse 2 says, So his officials said to him, Your Majesty, let us find a young woman to stay with you and take care of you. She will lie close to you and keep you warm. Verse 3 says, A search was made all over Israel for a beautiful young woman. And in Shumen, they found such a woman named Abishag and, and brought her to the king. She was very beautiful and waited on the king and took care of him. But he did not have intercourse with her. Should I continue? Uh, you continue. Okay, then verse, verse 5 to 6 says, Now that Absalom was dead, Adonijah, the son of David, and Haggith was the eldest surviving son. He was a very handsome man. David had never reprimanded him about anything, and he was ambitious to be king. He provided for himself chariots, horses, and an escort of 50 men. He talked with, jo he talked with Joab, whose mother was he talked with Joab, whose mother was Zer Zeruiah, and with Ab Abiathar, the priest, and they agreed to support his cause. But Zadok, the priest, Be Benina, some of, some of Jehodiah, Nathan, son of Jehodiah, Nathan, and Nathan, and the prophet. Shimei, Ray, and David's bodyguard were not on Adjonea's side. Verse 9 said, One day Adjonea offered a sacrifice of sheep, bulls, and fattened calves at Snake Rock, near the spring of Engrol. He invited the other sons of King David and the king's official, officials who were from Judah to come to this sacrificial feast. But he did not invite his half-brother Solomon or Nathan, the prophet, or Benia, or the king's bodyguard. Can I continue? Yes, you continue. Yes. Then the next setting is Solomon is made a king. Verse 11 says, Then Nathan went to Bathsheba, Solomon's mother, and asked her, Haven't you heard that Haggith's son, Adjonea has made himself king, and King David doesn't know anything about it. If you want to save your life and the life of your son Solomon, I would advise you to go at once to King David and ask him, Your Majesty, did you, did you Solomonly, did you solemnly promise me that my son Solomon would succeed you as a king? How is it then that Adjonea has become king, and Nathan added, Then, while you are still talking with King David, I will come in and confirm your story. Verse 15 said, says, So Bathsheba went to see the king in his bedroom. He was very old, and Abishag, the woman from, Sh the woman from Shunem, was, talking, was taking care of him. But Sheba bowed low before the king and he asked, What do you want? She answered, Your Majesty, you made me a solemn promise in the name of in the name of the Lord your God that my son Solomon would be king after you. But Adjonia but Adjonia has already become king, and you won't know anything about it. He has offered a sacrifice of many bulls, sheep, and fattened calves, and he invited your sons, and invited your sons and Abiathar, the priest, and Joab, the command of your army, to the feast. But he did not invite your son Solomon. 20, verse 20 says, Your Majesty, all the people of Israel are looking to you to tell, to tell them who is to succeed you as a king. If you don't, 
As soon as you are dead, my son Solomon and I will be treated as traitors. She was still speaking when Nathan arrived at the palace. The king was told that the prophet was there and Nathan went in and bowed low before the king. Then he said, Your Majesty, have you, anno have you announced that Adogina would succeed you as a king? This very day, he has gone and offered a sacrifice of many bulls, sheep, and fattened calves. He invited all sons, Joab, the command of your army, and Abiathar, the priest, and just now, they are feasting with him and shouting, Long live, king! But he did, but he did not invite me, sir, Ozadok, to the priest. Ozadok the priest, Obeninia, or, or Solomon. Did your majesty approve all this and not even tell your officials who is to succeed you as a king? Verse 28 says, King David said, Ask Bathsheba to come back in. And she came and stood before him. Then he said to her, I promise you by the living Lord who has rescued me from all my troubles that today I will keep the promise I made to you in the name of the Lord, the God of Israel, that your son Solomon would succeed me as king. Okay, you can stop there. Uh -huh. okay. Thank you very much. Now, according to that story, according to that story, uh, he was trying to read for us how King Solomon became a king. So you might find a question whereby they are asking you to give the analysis of how Solomon became a king. First of all, in the story, we have heard that there was somebody who was called uh, Adonija. We need to know who was Adonija. Adonija was the fourth son of King David. Mm? Adonijah was the fourth son of King David, which means that uh, Adonijah was a brother to Solomon. Mm? There were some other brothers, Absalom, Tamar, mm? but uh, Adonijah, mm? Adonijah, like I've said, he was a son of King David, but uh, the mother to, he, uh, to him was called Hagith. Remember, King David had many wives. King David had many wives. So Solomon, Solomon had to become a king because uh, he was uh, a son of David and Bathsheba. And uh, we are seeing that Nathan has Yeah, uh, as he had read in the Bible, Nathan went to Bathsheba, asked her, haven't you heard Nijia has made himself a king? Has made himself a king? Have you heard, uh, haven't you heard about that? And King David doesn't know anything about it. If you wanted to save your life and the life of your son Solomon, I would advise you to go at once to King David and ask him, hmm? ask him, your majesty, didn't you solemnly promise me that my son Solomon would succeed you as a king? Hmm? How is it then that Adonijah has become a king? How is it? Hmm? So Nathan was advising Bathsheba that go and tell King David. Hmm? As you are telling him, for me, I'll pop in. Hmm? I'll pop in to emphasize that, uh, that conversation. So we are saying that Solomon became a king because he was a son of David and Bathsheba. Number two, 
David had promised Bathsheba. Hmm? David had promised Bathsheba that her son Solomon would be his successor. But when David was on his deathbed, Adonijah went and declared himself a king. Hmm? Like I've said, Adonijah was a brother to Solomon, but of different mothers. Hmm? Adonijah, the mother, the mother to Adonijah was called Hagith. Whereas the mother to Solomon was Bathsheba, but the same father, David. So we are seeing how Solomon became a king. He became a king because he was a son of David and Bathsheba. Number two, he became a king because David had promised Bathsheba that David had Somebody is asking here that uh, was Solomon the first son? No, we are seeing that David had made a promise. Hmm? He had made a promise. Hmm? He had made a promise. You know, when you make a promise to somebody, you have to fulfill it. So David had made a promise to Bathsheba that uh, your, your son is going to be a successor. Hmm? But we are seeing that when David was on his deathbed, Adonijah, the brother to Solomon. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody is, uh, yes. Somebody's hand is up. Okay. Another point. We are seeing that Adonijah invited the sons of David, mm? Pris, mm? Abitha, and Joab the army commander, plus many of Israel, they shouted and praised God for the rise of Adonijah. And we are seeing that when Nathan heard, when Nathan heard about that, he went to Bathsheba and told her to go to David and remind him his promise to her. Or else Adonijah would kill Solomon. Adonijah would kill Solomon. We are seeing that. Bathsheba did as Prophet Nathan had told her. She went to David and told him the whole story of how Hadonijah had self, mm, imposed himself as the next king. Mm. In due course, Nathan, uh, Nathan also arrived to confirm the story. Mm. David reassured Bathsheba that her son Solomon would be the next king. Hmm? Your son is going to be the next king. Don't worry. Bathsheba, don't worry. Uh, your son is going to be the next what? The next king. Do not worry. So David then sent for Zodak, Nathan, the prophet, and Bania, the army officer, to go and anoint Solomon at Gihon. We are seeing how Solomon became a what? A king. If you know, if you want to know how Solomon became a king, you you go to the Bible. Uh, First Kings, chapter one. Uh, following, you read the story. Hmm? It is what we are looking at right now. So Solomon made a ride on the father's mule. Hmm? or the father's mule, and went into the city to offer a sacrifice to the Lord. People went singing, praising, shouting, long live Solomon, long live king of Israel. Mm? They were shouting. Mm? They were shouting. When Adonijah learned that David declared Solomon as the next king, he became afraid, and his soldiers departed. Mm? And ceremoniously, they departed. Okay? They departed unceremoniously. And uh, we are seeing that they were fearing that Solomon would kill Adonijah. Hagith, Hagith, remember, Hagith was the mother to Adonijah. Hmm? Hagith was uh, the mother to Adonijah. So Hagith he went to Solomon, begging him not to kill her son, Adonijah. Please don't kill my son, Solomon. 
David advised Solomon to be a God-fearing man, straightforward leader. And uh, we are seeing that the, uh, that's how uh, Solomon became a king. That is the story. Like I said, you go to the Bible, in the Old Testament, First Kings chapter 1, following. You will see how Solomon became a king. So after looking at that, we need to look at the reasons for Solomon's rise to power. Hmm? The reasons for Solomon's rise to power. Hmm? Reasons for Solomon's rise to power. Number one, the role of Zodak, the priest who anointed him in the spring of Gion. Hmm? The unpopularity of Adonijah, you know, you may love to be a leader, but when you are not popular, hmm? when you are not popular, <clears throat> okay? I can give an example. In the previous elections that we had, there is somebody, there is a musician who wanted to become a leader, hmm? Jose Chameleon. Hmm? He was popular in music, but he wasn't popular in what? In politics. So uh, people did not give him the, the votes that he expected. Hmm? So the unpopularity of Adonijah hmm, before his father and the prophet Nathan hmm, was one of the reasons as to why Solomon became a king because we are seeing that. <clears throat> we are seeing that. When Nathan heard about Adonijah as he, uh, making himself a king, hmm, Nathan, who was a prophet by then, he went to Bathsheba. Hmm? He went to Bathsheba, Solomon's, Solomon's mother. And we are seeing that he asked her, hmm? haven't you heard? Hmm? Bathsheba, Bathsheba, you are sitting here. But haven't you heard hmm? that uh, Hagith's son, Adonijah, has made himself a king? Haven't you heard about that? Hmm? Remember, King David doesn't know anything about this. Hmm? If you want to save your life and the life of your son, Solomon, I would advise you, go at once to King David and ask him, your majesty, didn't you, Solomon, you promised me that my son Solomon would be, uh, would be a king? Hmm? Would, didn't you promise me that? We are saying that. Nathan added that. Then, while you are talking to David, hmm? That means that Nathan was on the side of Solomon. Nathan was on the side of Solomon. We are looking at the reasons for Solomon's rise to power. So the prophet Nathan was on the side of Solomon. So he was telling Bathsheba, the mother to Solomon, that as you are telling the king, David, for me, I'll pop in. Hmm? I'll pop in. And I'll come in to confirm your story. I'll confirm it. So the unpopularity of Adonijah before his father and the prophet Nathan was one of uh, the reasons as to why Solomon rose to power. Another point, God is promised to David to retain one of his descendants as kings of Israel. Remember, God had promised David that I'm going to retain one of your descendants to be king of Israel. Mm -hmm. To be king of Israel. And like I've told you earlier, like I've told you earlier, that uh, <clears throat> David had uh, sons like Solomon. He had sons like uh, Adonijah, Abusolom, Tamar, and so many others. Hmm? And so many others. But we're seeing that God had promised him that I'm going to retain one of your descendants. One of your descendants. We're also seeing that the role of Bena, the military officer, hmm? this military officer was also on the side of Solomon. Hmm? We are looking at the reasons for Solomon's rise.
Mercy to power. David's love for Bathsheba, how oh, they missing her, that your son Solomon will be hmm, the king when I die. So David's love for Bathsheba, hmm, that led her to corrupt hmm, uh, David to choose Solomon. Hmm. So David had a lot of love for Bathsheba. We remember that story, hmm, how David saw Bathsheba. Hmm, when she was having a shower, mm? okay? So David had a lot of love for Bathsheba. That's why he had to promise her. He had to promise her. You know, when people are too are, are deep in love, they make a lot of promises. Mm? So we are also seeing that. Solomon became a king. Solomon became a king simply because David had a lot of love for the mother, Bathsheba. That's why David promised the mother that your son Solomon is going to be the next king. Another point we're seeing that David is old age. Hmm? If David was still hmm, uh, energetic, maybe Solomon wouldn't have rose to power by that time. But we are seeing that David was old hmm? and he was at his deathbed, very old. Mm. He was old. Mm. He was old. Mm. And uh, we are seeing that <clears throat> that enabled Solomon to do what? Rise to power. I don't know whether we have any questions over there before we look at the achievements of King Solomon. For those ones who have just joined us, our topic today, it is King Solomon. We have seen who was Solomon. How did he become a king? What were his reasons? What were some of the reasons for his rise to power? Hmm? What, are some, what were some of the reasons for his rise to power? And after looking at all that, we want to look at the achievements of King Solomon. We want to look at the achievements of King Solomon. Okay. Okay. Achievement number one. Achievement number one. Solomon, when he became a king, hmm, he was a very wise man who promoted justice in Israel. Very wise man. Solomon was very wise. Hmm? A case in point, I was when he was able to judge a difficult case of two prostitutes who are claiming the right of possession of a child. Hmm? Those two prostitutes who are claiming uh, uh, the right of possession of a child. Solomon advised them to cut the child, to cut the child into pieces, in two pieces. So we are seeing that he was very wise. He was a very wise man. And uh, I want us to read about the story. Anybody with a Bible? With you very close, you read for us that. I give you the, the verse. You put up your hand. I pick you, then you read for us that verse. And we see that case that is solved. Yes, somebody's hand is up. Where are you? Yes, yes, please. Uh, good morning, sir. Good morning to you. How are you? I'm fine. Okay. You open First Kings. Yes. Uh, chapter 3, verse 16. Yes. Yes, you read from there. First Kings, chapter 3, verse 16. Solomon judges a difficult case. Yes. One day two prostitutes came 
and presented themselves before King Solomon. Mm -hmm. One of them said, Your Majesty, this woman and I live in the same house, and I gave birth to a baby boy at home while she was there. Two days, ago, two days after my child was born, she also gave birth to a baby boy. Only the two of us were there in the house. No one else was present. Then one night, she accidentally rolled over one on her baby and smoothed it. She got up during the night, took my son from my side while I was asleep, and carried him to her bed. Then she put the dead child in my bed. The next morning, when I woke up, I was going to feed my baby. I saw that it was dead. I looked at, at it more closely and saw that it was not my child. But the other woman said, no, the living child is mine and the dead one is yours. The first woman answered, no, this dead child is yours and the living one is mine. And so they argued before the king. Then King Solomon said, each of you claims that the living child is hers and that the dead child belongs to the other. He sent for a word, and when it was brought, he said, he, he sent for a sword, and when he, it was brought, he said, cut the living child into two pieces and give each half of it, each woman half of it. The real mother, her heart full of love for her son, said to the king, Please, your majesty, don't kill the child. Give it to her. But the other woman said, don't give it to either of us. Go ahead and cut it in two. Then Solomon said, don't kill the child. Give it to the first woman. She is its real mother. When the people of Israel heard of Solomon's decision, they were all filled with deep respect for him because they knew that then that God had given him the wisdom to settle disputes fairly. Okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> so, we are looking at the achievements of King Solomon. And achievement number one, we have seen that Solomon was a very wise man who promoted justice in Israel. And we are looking at a case in point, when he was able to judge a difficult case mm, between prost, uh, two prost, uh, prostitutes who are claiming for a child, as we have heard the story, one of the women, as she was sleeping at night, mm, she rolled over her baby and this baby died. So what she did, she got this dead baby, mm, she put it to the other side of the other woman, the other prostitute, and she removed the other uh, living baby to this other side of hers. So when this mother, this other mother woke up the following morning, she found out that the baby was dead. So they had to go to the king, Solomon, to report this case. They were all claiming that this living baby was theirs. So what David did, no, what, what Solomon did, he ordered for a sword hmm, and said, cut that baby into two pieces. Because the real mother didn't want her baby to be cut in two pieces, she said, no, 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 king, please give that baby to her. Whereas the other one who knew that she had killed her baby at night, hmm, she said, no, you can cut that baby. You go on, go on. So, Solomon saw so that the other one who was saying don't cut, she was the real mother. And that is wisdom. Hmm? That is wisdom. And uh, we are saying that that is one of the achievements of King Solomon. When we try to continue another achievement, Solomon was a great merchant king. He was a great merchant king. 
he exploited resources around the area uh, that his father had conquered. Uh, we are seeing that Iggy exploited copper depots around Edom. Uh, furthermore, we are seeing that uh, uh, the missionaries put, uh, no, no, no. We're seeing that when God asked him what he wanted in life, Solomon asked for wisdom. Hmm? He asked for wisdom, not material things. This made him famous and earned him good credit uh, from God. Hmm? Sometimes you can imagine somebody asks you, what do you want? Hmm? Nowadays, ask NSD Queen, what do you ask for anything? Is there anybody who can say, give me wisdom? Hmm? They will say, I need a car, I need a big house, I need what? Hmm? But David, uh, no, but Solomon asked for wisdom. Hmm? Uh, somebody is saying that uh, we are looking at divinity, paper one. Divinity paper one, Old Testament. Divinity paper one, Old Testament. Okay, you are most welcome. Uh, we are looking at the achievements of King Solomon. Uh, furthermore, we are seeing that Solomon built a great and precious temple. Hmm? Built a great and precious temple for Yahweh in Israel. This was the first temple in Israel. Mm? It was the first temple in Israel. Mm? The first temple in Israel. That is another achievement. We are also seeing that uh, uh, he's created for organized trade in war horses. This made him prosperous through his, uh, through this Israel attained a high level of economic prosperity, mm? he organized the trade. Mm? He built a, a very magnificent palace for himself and others, mm? for each of his wives. By doing this, he made Jerusalem a magnificent administrative city. Mm? He built a very magnificent palace, mm? very magnific magnificent. Uh, he built cities in Haza, so many places. Built cities. We also see that uh, Solomon established and developed trade links with other countries. Mm? He, he made trade links with other countries in order to enhance trade in his country. Mm? He initiated and developed port, uh, port facilities at Arion, Goba. Mm? We are also seeing that Solomon developed the nation by going beyond his father, father's created administration. Mm. He organized internal affairs by dividing the country into 12 tax districts. This helped in the collection of taxes and maintaining the stability in Israel. That's why we are seeing that he was able to build a magnificent palace and even other cities because he was collecting a lot of taxes. He was collecting a lot of taxes. In his initial years, in his initial years of rule, Solomon followed his father's instructions. He loved the Lord and offered sacrifices to him at various altars in the kingdom. This made King Solomon a real man. Mm -hmm. It made Solomon a real what? A real man. Mm -hmm. hey, he followed his father's instructions. <clears throat> Furthermore, he is credited for utilizing his talents to glorify the Lord. How? He did this by composing five, uh, 30,000 proverbs. Mm -hmm and 1,000 songs. That is to say, 
the book of Proverbs, songs of songs. Mm? When you go to the Bible, mm? eh, songs of songs. Eh, some of you, when you go to that book, songs of songs, you only look for, for love, whatever. Mm? But uh, that book, songs of songs, and even uh, Proverbs, mm? they were they were they were made by King Solomon. So he is credited for utilizing his talent to glorify the Lord. That is another achievement. That is another achievement. <clears throat> Solomon's reign was very prosperous. It was very prosperous. We are seeing that silver was common as stones, therefore Solomon made Israel economically powerful. Solomon's court displayed the highest level of uh, supplicated culture, which had not been seen in Israel before. Uh, we are also seeing that uh, he brought fame to Israel. He brought fame to Israel when he had many foreign rulers to come to Israel mm, to see uh, for themselves what Solomon was doing. Mm. Remember, he had built a magnificent palace. We are also seeing that he made a treaty to King of Iran of Tyre. Mm. This brought about peace between the two nations. Remember, at first, these two nations, mm, they always fought, but uh, we're seeing that he made a treaty with King of uh, uh, Tyre, this brought about peace. Mm. This brought about peace. He dedicated the temple that he had built to God and made it the central uh, place of worship in Israel. So as we have looked at all those achievements, King Solomon registered some failures. Mm. Just like Uganda have a saying, Omurunji Tabulako, Kamogo, but also King, uh, King Solomon registered some failures. Uh, failure number one, he made the Israelites suffer. Mm? He made them suffer with a burden of forced labor. Mm? With a burden of forced labor. Remember, he was building a magnificent palace, he was building a temple. He was building cities. Hmm? Uh, we are seeing that uh, he 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 forced the Israelites hmm, into into labor, and we are seeing that was still this was when he drafted uh, thirty thousand Israelites and set them in labor camps hmm, in Lebanon. That was not good at all. It wasn't good. Hmm? He overtaxed the Israelites. Hmm? He overtaxed them. Why? Because he was looking for money. To build, uh, to construct the temple, and even to to construct a magnificent palace. So, how could he get the funds by overtaxing the Israelites? Hmm? He enslaved the Israelites. Hmm? He enslaved them. This was mainly his building programs because of the building programs, uh, and uh, we're seeing that to the people of Israel were not given these guys. Hmm? You know, you can be a slave in disguise when you don't know. Nowadays, we have so many of our brothers and sisters, aunties, uncles, who freely take themselves to slavery. Hmm? Those Arab countries. And then afterwards, when they reach there, they, they end up crying. You know, you see, we are dying. We are overworking us. Hmm? If only the other early days of slavery, whereby they used to, to take us into slavery by force. Nowadays, we take our slaves into slavery hmm? unknowingly. So, even King Solomon, he enslaved the Israelites, hmm? who are slaves in disguise because they suffered in order to hurry the work of the completion of the king. Hmm? Okay, Solomon married many foreign women. 
married money foreign women. Yet it was against God's command. God didn't want that. Hmm? God didn't want that. So he married foreign women and we're seeing that it was against God's command of not marrying Pagani women. These women brought with him uh, new cultures that defied hmm, the, 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 the background of Israel. Hmm? These women that he married. He allowed the foreign women to continue worshiping their God. Solomon built worship places and altars for gods of his wives. These wives that he married, he could uh, build for them worship places and altars for gods. Hmm? This was not good. Hmm? That means that he was diverting the people of Israel from monotheism to polytheism. When you talk about monotheism, this is the worship of only one God, only one God, the living God. Hmm? Polytheism, this is the worshiping of other gods. Hmm? Other gods. Okay? So that was another failure. <clears throat> we are also seeing that uh, he went ahead and he worshiped the gods of his wives. Mm -hmm. You can imagine. You know, wives, they normally make men uh, to do evil things when they are deep in love. Mm -hmm. So he worshiped the gods of his wives that he was marrying. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. And we are seeing that at the end of the day, hmm, who can tell us what do we mean by syncretism, by chauvins? Hmm? By chauvins? Syncretism? Yes, somebody's hand. Yes, Narubega? Syncretism is when it is syncretism. Okay. Mm. Is when you defy what has been told to you. Mm. And you do other things contrary. Mm. Okay. Criticism or syncretism? Mm. Syncretism. Religious. Okay, let us hear from some other people. Yes, please. Syncretism is the merging of different religions. Yes, yes, very good. Thank you. Merging of different forms of beliefs or practice. Mm? You were a witch doctor. Mm? You know there are some people, they go to church on Sunday, they are in church. Mm? Monday, they go to Mama Fina. Mm? Wednesday, they go to Chivuri. Mm? That is syncretism. Mm? You are combining different forms of belief or practice or worship. Mm? So that is what Solomon was doing. Mm? He worshipped gods of his wives together with his God, our living God. Mm? This was against the law of Israel. Mm? Yes, this was against the law of Israel. Another failure, Solomon's failure, uh, uh, Solomon's failure was seen in his extravagance. Say, extravagance. Say, mm? when we talk about extravagance, this is somebody who spends a lot. Mm? When we go to European history, we had one man. King Louis the 16th with his wife Marie Antoinette, they were extravagant. Hmm? We are seeing that King Louis the 16th had 2,000 horses for what? Hmm? You're going to use the 2,000 horses for what? So even King Solomon was extravagant. Hmm? Being extravagant, you have a lot for nothing. Hmm? You have a lot with yourself for nothing. We are seeing that uh, the daily provision were not in simplicity as servant of God. Hmm? He needed 10,000 liters of oil 
30 heads of cattle, 100 sheep daily for his court. You can imagine. Hmm? You can imagine every day, 10,000 liters are used in his palace. 30 heads of cattle are being slaughtered. Hmm? 100 sheep daily. Yeah? That is being extravagant. <coughs> so that was another failure. Solomon became uh, too polygamous. Hmm? Was too polygamous. Too polygamous. I think we, we understand what we mean by that. Uh, he had 300 wives, 700 concubines. You can imagine. What, what are you going to use these, these women for? Hmm? Uh, this means that Solomon was, was not ready to follow the law because he had so many wives. That means that he was a womanizer. Hmm? When you are having so many wives, you are a womanizer. Hmm? And that was not allowed. Solomon accumulated a lot of wealth with him. A lot. And uh, this was another failure. Hmm? This was another failure. He accumulated a very big debt for Israel because of his construction program. Very big debt because of his uh, construction programs. And we are seeing that uh, <clears throat> as a result, he sold 20 towns in the region. Uh, Solomon was a murderer. Hmm? He killed his brother, half brother, hmm? Adonijah, who had claimed to be a king. Hmm? Solomon set a bad example for the Israelites by his negative action as a leader. He killed his brother, hmm? Adonijah. You remember Adonijah? Uh, at first, he claimed to be a king. Hmm? Yes, Naruwega? Uh, mm, I was just asking how many brothers did who did Solomon have? How many brothers did he have? I will that. I will see that. Solomon had Absalom, had Adonija, mm. those are the known brothers. Mm. Okay, sir. Okay. Mm. But did Okay, so since time is not on our side, uh, that is going to be our assignment. That is going to be our assignment. To what extent did Solomon reap from what his father David had sold? To what extent did Solomon reap from what his father David had sold? Uh, we have come to the end of the lesson once again. Uh, this lesson is being funded by Edify Uganda, coordinated by uh, COSEA and implemented by ICT Teachers Association. I request somebody uh, to give us a closing prayer. Put up your hand, you give us a closing prayer. Yes, please. Give us a closing prayer. Somebody's hand is up. Somebody to give us a closing prayer. We end this lesson very fast. Yes, Stuart. Let's pray. Mighty Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for each and everything that we have been able to learn through this lesson. Mighty Father, we, we thank you that you have made it possible. It's not by our power, but it's because of your power, Mighty Father. May you continue guiding and protecting us through this pandemic, Almighty Father Jehovah. Let each and everything we do be influenced by you, Jehovah. As we are living, Almighty Father, let's live and depart physically, but spiritually remain together. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.